here in Detroit, Michigan. This is day one of our 33-day preparation to the total consecration of St. Joseph. Here in Detroit, Michigan at St. Joseph, we were recently erected a shrine on March 19th and included in that decree and good news is that we will be making as a parish and now joined by many souls across the globe, we will be making the solemn consecration to St. Joseph. So that our consecration day concludes on the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, May 1st, today, March 30th, is day one of that preparation. We will be using as our guide and the source of our readings and prayers the book recently published by Father Calloway. There will be time for you to find the right page if you have this book at home. Otherwise, one of the advantages of this live stream is that you can simply tune in and follow along as you wait to have the book yourself. Since this is day one, let us begin with the Veni Creator, that traditional prayer to the Holy Spirit, so that we may be docile to all the graces this consecration is meant to obtain for us. You can find the English text to this traditional prayer on page 247. Again, that's on page 247 of the consecration to St. Joseph by Father Cal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams which sweetly flow in silent streams from thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the poor. O come, thou source of all our store. Come, fill our hearts with love. O thou of comforters the best, O thou, the soul's delightful guest, the pilgrim's sweet relief. Rest art thou in our toil, most sweet refreshment in the noonday heat, and solace in our grief. O blessed light of life thou art, fill with thy light the inmost heart of those who hope in thee. Without thy Godhead nothing can have any price or worth in man, nothing can harmless be. Lord, wash our sinful stains away, refresh from heaven our barren clay, our wounds and bruises heal. To thy sweet yoke our stiff necks bow, warm with thy fire our hearts of snow, our wandering feet recall. Grant to thy faithful, dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word, the sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace that we, in peace may die and ever be, in joy before thy face. Amen. Now to properly dispose ourselves, and before we begin the short reading that is foreseen for day one, I encourage you to go to one of the appendices, Go to Addendum 1. It's on page 271. And it's an excerpt from the Predestination of St. Joseph and His Eminent Sanctity by Father Garagou Lagrange. Again, to prepare us for our readings today, we have this preliminary reading on page 271 that teaches us St. Joseph's preeminence over the other saints. The opinion that St. Joseph is the greatest of saints after Our Lady is one which is becoming daily more commonly held in the Church. We do not hesitate to look on the humble carpenter as higher in grace and eternal glory than the patriarchs and the greatest of prophets higher than St. John the Baptist, the Apostles, the Martyrs, and the great doctors of the Church. He who is 
least in the depth of his humility, is, because of the interconnection of the virtues, the greatest in the height of his charity. He that is lesser among you all, he is the greater. Saint Joseph's preeminence was taught by Jean Gerson and Saint Bernardine of Siena. It became more and more common in the course of the 16th century. It was admitted by Saint Teresa of Avila, by the Dominican Isidore of Isolanus, who appears to have written the first treatise on Saint Joseph, by Saint Francis de Sales, and many other saints. The doctrine of Saint Joseph's preeminence received the approval of Leo XIII in his encyclical Quam Quam Pluribus, dated August 15, 1889. Quote, the dignity of the Mother of God is so elevated that there can be no higher created one. But since Saint Joseph, was united to the Blessed Virgin by the conjugal bond, there is no doubt that he approached nearer than any other to that supereminent dignity of hers by which the Mother of God surpasses all created natures. Conjugal union is the greatest of all. By its very nature, it is accompanied by a reciprocal communication of the goods of the spouses. If then God gave St. Joseph to Mary to be her spouse, a witness of her virginity, a guardian of her honor, but he made him also participate by the conjugal bond in the imminent dignity which was hers. End quote. The multitude of Christians in all succeeding generations are committed to him in a real though hidden manner. This idea is expressed in the litany approved by the Church. And we will recite that litany in conclusion. But first, let us turn to our reading for day one of our total consecration to St. Joseph. Our day one reading is on page 13 of Father Calloway's consecration to St. Joseph. It begins with a quote by St. Peter Julian. When God wishes to raise a soul to greater heights, he unites it to St. Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. Do you want to ascend to greater heights in the spiritual life? Consecration to St. Joseph will take you there. Many Christians have consecrated themselves to the Virgin Mary so as to be more closely united to Jesus. Without a doubt, consecration to Mary is one of the best things you can do for your spiritual life. The essence of Marian consecration is to help you become, quote, another Mary for Jesus a faithful, loving, and trusting companion of the Savior. Consecration to St. Joseph does something similar. Consecration to St. Joseph will help you become, quote, another Joseph for Jesus and Mary. That is, entrusting yourself entirely to St. Joseph helps you become a faithful, loving, and trusting companion Jesus and Mary. In the New Testament, we read that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, under the watchful care of his parents. Such an increase can happen to you, too, if you entrust yourself to the paternal care of St. Joseph. St. Bernard of Clairvaux explains how it works. He writes, quote, who and what manner of man this blessed Joseph was, you may conjecture from the name by which, a dispensation being allowed, he deserved to be so honored as to be believed and to be called the Father of God. You may conjecture it from his very name, 
which being interpreted means increase. End quote. Saint Joseph is then the increaser. He has paternal love for you and the power to increase the presence of God in your life and take you to greater heights in the spiritual life. For centuries, this secret of Saint Joseph lay hidden. Saints, mystics, and a handful of popes knew of it. Now it is your turn to discover it. Now is the time of Saint Joseph. The Church and the world greatly need Saint Joseph. We need him to help us return to the love of Jesus and to living lives of virtue. We desperately need Saint Joseph's protection as well. The family, the foundation of society, is under attack. The family of God, the Catholic Church, is also undergoing vicious assaults from the world, the flesh, the devil, and some of her own children. We need Saint Joseph to protect us. He is our loving and merciful Father, holy, strong, and ready to help. He is forever linked to Jesus, Mary, and the Church. He protected the Holy Family. He will protect us too, if we entrust ourselves to His paternal heart and His spiritual care. Saint Joseph is your spiritual father. All children resemble their parents. You are a child of Saint Joseph. You need to resemble him, especially by imitating his virtues and faithfulness to Jesus and Mary. Saint Joseph plays a vital, life-giving role in your spiritual growth and well-being. This is the heart of consecration to Saint Joseph. Blessed William Joseph Shamana explains it well. He states, quote, he, St. Joseph, was not a passive instrument in the great work of our salvation. He played a very active role, and that is why he was included in the merciful counsels of the incarnate wisdom. End quote. The merciful love of God has given St. Joseph to you as a spiritual father. Are you ready to ascend to greater heights in the spiritual life? Are you ready to draw nearer to Jesus and Mary and experience an increase in virtue? Let's go to Joseph. Ita ad Joseph. We are going to consecrate ourselves to Saint Joseph. We shall place at his feet all that we are and all that we have. So now with a prayerful disposition of heart and great confidence towards our spiritual Father, let us recite together the Litany of St. Joseph. For those following along in this book, the Litany of St. Joseph can be found on page 233. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ hear us, Christ graciously hear us. God the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph most just, Pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. 
Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, when your loving providence choose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so many of you that are parishioners at St. Joseph's Shrine are familiar with our daily prayer to St. Joseph as composed by St. Francis de Sales, a patron saint of the Institute of Christ the King. We will be concluding each day of this 33 day uh, with that prayer to St. Joseph. If you have your prayer card at home or if you know it by heart, please join me in saying it. And if you do not yet know it, we will make sure that it is available in posting in our social media. Glorious St. Joseph, Spouse of Mary, grant us thy paternal protection. We beseech thee by the heart of Jesus Christ. O thou whose power extends to all our necessities and can render possible for us the most impossible things. Open thy fatherly eyes to the needs of thy children. In the trouble and distress which afflicts us, we confidently have recourse to thee. Deign to take under thy charitable charge this important and difficult matter, cause of our worries. Make its happy outcome be for God's glory and for the good of his devoted servants. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.